Hello, this is Mr. Huber. In this lesson, we're going to learn about standard form and writing linear equations in their standard form. So first, let's recall slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form uses a slope m and the y-intercept b. In order to have standard form, we're going to want to have the x and the y on the same side of the equal sign. Okay, standard form for a linear equation has the x and y on the same side of the equal sign. Okay, the a, the b, and the c here are coefficients. They're just constants, numbers, okay? And a and b are not going to be zero. Think about it. If I put a zero in here for a, zero x, it would just eliminate that, and I wouldn't have an x and a y at all. I'd have just a y. So to have standard form, I have an x, a y, some number in front of them that's not zero, and a value for c. So ax plus by equals c. We'll see what that looks like. It could be, and this is just made up, no particular example, but I could have 5x plus 2y equals 7, right? That would be a standard form example, where the a would be a 5, the b would be a 2, and the c would be a 7. In order to get our equation in standard form, the first thing we're going to do is find the slope. Right? That's been the first thing, whether we're doing slope-intercept, point-slope, or here standard form, we want the slope. So then we can write point-slope form, and recall point-slope form here, y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1, where x1 and y1 are some point on the line, and m is our slope. So we find the slope, then we write point-slope form, and then we're going to simplify that to slope-intercept form, again, where we're going to distribute the m into the parentheses, and then we can add or subtract this value to get the y by itself. And then one more step is we're going to move the x to the left side. So we're going to rewrite the standard form with x and y on the same side of the equal sign. So find the slope, write point-slope form, and simplify that. Okay? Then standard form, one extra step there, we're going to rewrite that with the x and y on the same side of the equal sign. So let's see what that looks like here with a couple examples. The first one, where we're given a couple of points. So we want to write an equation in standard form for a line that goes through these two points. So our first step was to find the slope. So our slope here is 4 minus negative 4 over negative 1 minus negative 3. Okay? All right, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This will come out to a positive 8 over 2. Remember, we're subtracting a negative is adding, so our slope is 4. Once we have the slope, now we're going to write point-slope form. So point-slope form, I'm going to pick either point. I'm going to use the second point here, so I'm going to use this point, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to have y minus 4 equals m times parentheses x minus x1, so minus a negative 1. So I've written point-slope form. So I find the slope, right? That was my first step. Let's number them just so we remember, right? First step was to find slope. Second step was to write point-slope form. The third step is to simplify this point-slope form. So I can distribute into parentheses. For my third step, I will get y minus 4 equals 4x plus 4. And then I can add a 4 to both sides. Right? I'm trying to get the y by itself. To simplify this equals 4x plus 8. And then my fourth and final step is going to be to rewrite this in standard form by getting the x on the same side of the equal sign as the y. And I'll write that over here. We have a little more room. That would be negative 4x plus y equals 8. And that would be standard form. ax plus by equals c. All right, so we've got ax plus by equals c. The b, there's a 1 there. That's fine. We don't have to write the 1. If you do write a 1, it's okay. So remember, find the slope. So we use the two points. We found our slope between those two points. Then we write point-slope form. It doesn't matter which of these points you used. I used the second point, but you could use the first one, and you should get the same thing when you simplify it to slope-intercept form. So you take point-slope form, simplify it to slope-intercept form. And now one other step is to get the x and y on the same side of the equal sign. So I canceled out the 4x by subtracting 4x, and I get negative 4x plus y equals 8. And that is standard form. Now let's see one where we've got a line that's graphed, and we want to write standard form. So our first step is going to be to find the slope. Well, I can count the slope on here if I want, rise over run. So it would be negative 3 over 1. So my slope is negative 3. And now I can write point slope form. I'm going to take this point here. They're both positive values, so that can sometimes make things easier. y minus 1 equals m, and then parentheses x minus 1. Here our x and y are both 1. And now I can simplify this by distributing into the parentheses and then adding 1 to both sides, and I get y equals negative 3x 
plus 4. And then to get standard form, I'm going to add 3x on both sides. So it cancels out, and I have 3x plus y equals 4. And there's my standard form, ax plus by equals c. So remember, find the slope, right point slope form. Simplify that to slope-intercept form, and then get the x on the same side as the y, and you've got standard form. All right, let's see another type of thing we could do with this, where we are going to write equivalent equations. All right, so if equations are equal to each other, it means we did the same thing on both sides of the equal sign, just like when we were solving before simplifying. If I add 4 on one side, I add 4 on the other side. If I divide on one side, I divide on the other side. So if I want standard form equivalent equations, I either need to divide everything by the same number or multiply everything by the same number. It doesn't matter. We're going to write two of them, and there's so many different ways you could do this. All right, you could say I'm going to multiply everything by 2, by 5, by negative 7, by 112. Okay, I wouldn't make it that difficult, but let's see what we could do here. We could multiply everything by 2. Okay, if I multiply everything by 2, I would get the equation 4x plus 12y equals 20. These two equations are equivalent. The one I started with and this one in red are equivalent to each other. You could divide everything by 2. You could multiply everything by anything you want. I'm going to multiply by 5 just because. Okay, no reason. Okay, pick 5. You can multiply by anything you want. 10x plus 30y equals 50. All three of these equations are equivalent to each other. The one we started with, the one in red, the one in blue. So I wrote two equations in standard form. This is standard form, ax plus by equals c. ax plus by equals c. They're equivalent to what I started with. Make sure you do the same thing to everything on both sides of the equal sign, and you have an equation that's equivalent to the one you started with. Just for a review of horizontal and vertical lines, because they're a little different here. Right? They're not necessarily going to be an ax plus by. I talked about that before. If the a is 0 or the b is 0 and one of those cancels out, that's our horizontal and vertical line situations. So let's look at this vertical line. Vertical is the red line here. Okay? This line is a vertical. And if you don't remember, what am I going to do for writing that equation? Think about other points that are on that line. This point here would be the point 4, comma, negative 1. We have a point right up here. This would be 4, comma, 2. And we should start to see a pattern here. So the red line will be x equals 4. That would be the equation for that red line. For the blue line, if I start getting coordinates for these other points, this point, for instance, would be 1, comma, negative 4. This point would be 3, comma, negative 4. So horizontal lines, like the one we have here in blue, that's a horizontal line, is going to be a y equals whatever the y value is for all those points. So y equals negative 4. So remember, a vertical line is an x equals whatever the x value is for all those points. A horizontal line is a y equals whatever the y is for all of those points. Right. So it's not necessarily an ax plus by situation. We want to make sure we're aware of and remembering what to do for those horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, let's take a break from these linear equations here and talk about who the first athlete was to be paid a yearly salary more than the president of the United States? So it's a better year. I mean, maybe that would be a pretty good year to get paid more than the president. Nowadays, a lot of athletes are paid more than the president of the United States, but this wasn't always the case. So who was the first one? There's a picture of him. Maybe you have seen that before. Sandra, George Herman, otherwise known as Babe Ruth. That's right, Babe Ruth in 1930. Two had a salary of eighty thousand dollars, and the president, Herbert Hoover's, was seventy-five thousand dollars. And when someone asked him whether he thought he should be paid more than the president of the United States, he famously said, "I had a better year than the president did." So apparently, he thought he had a better year and was deserving of that salary more than the president. All right, let's get back to some linear equations. See how we can apply what we've been doing with standard form to this situation. So we got a school taking a field trip, and they're using two different size vans. The large vans can hold 12 people, and small vans can hold 8 people. So we're going to write an equation in standard form. We can do this because we have two situations, the large and small vans that we're putting together to add up and hold a total number of people that are in these vans. So our equation for this situation, we could write as 12L plus 8S equals P. Okay, L equals large vans. Okay. S equals small vans. Defining our variables is important here, so we know what those stand for. And P equals total people. 
Okay. So we could figure out how many people we can transport by how many large vans and how many small vans we're using, the number of people that can fit into each of those. So that's a standard form, right? Instead of AX, BY, and C, we've got L and S, and we're going to figure out a number for the P. So that C value, where the P is, we're going to have a figure there that we're going to get from this next situation where we know we're going to use two large vans and 15 small vans. So if we want to calculate how many total people that would be, we'd have 12 times 2 plus 15 times 8. Okay, and that will come out to 144. So there's 144 people going on our field trip. We're going to take two large vans, that's 12 times 2, 15 small vans, that's 15 times the 8 people in each of those, and that would come out to a total of 144 people. So what would a graph look like for this situation? All right, let's graph this. We're going to graph it using intercepts. So when we graph this, we're going to have our two axes like this, Okay, we'll have S here and L here. It's fine. You can reverse them if you want. That's fine. You're going to count by two. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay? And then on the L axis, I'm going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so that's 20 all the way at the top there. So if I want to find the intercepts for my equation, I'm going to have 12L plus 8S equals 144. That's my situation now where I know that C value, the number of people is 144, right? So I was putting that 144 in there for P. And I can find the intercepts by doing 12L equals 144. What happens when S is 0? That would be L equals 12. And what happens when the L is 0? Well, that would give me 8S equals 144. Remember, to find the intercepts, put a 0 in for the other variable. So if I put a 0 in here for S, 8 times 0 is 0, I'll just have 12L equals 144. I want to find the S-intercept. I put a 0 in for L. I have 0 plus 8S. That will give me the 8S equals 144. And I divide both sides of that by 8, and I'll get S equals 18. So now I can graph that. My S-intercept is 18. My L-intercept is 18. 12, and I can draw the line through those two points. That's my graph, using the intercepts. Right? So plug in a 0 for one variable to find the intercept for the other variable. So I've got my L and S intercepts, and I've got a graph drawn for that situation. And now we've seen this before, we can come up with some different combinations of numbers of large and small vans that we could use. So remember, every point on this line is a solution for that equation. So we could use this to maybe gauge where do we think another combination would be? Well, let's come up with the first two that we should be able to get pretty straightforward. 12 large vans and 0 small vans, right? That's one of our intercepts right here. 12 large vans, 0 small vans. Then we could take our other intercept, 0 large vans and 18 small vans. So use the two intercepts. So three possible combinations. Two of them are from intercepts. We should have those. Then we can use maybe the graph to help us gauge where might another possibility be. So we could maybe read on our graph, oh, what do we think this is if I get, you know, 6 here? But I have to plug in some numbers to figure out what works. So let's try something. Let's try um, L equals 6. So if L equals 6, I'm going to have 12 times 6 plus 8S equals 144. Right? So that's going to give me 72 plus 8S equals 144. And then when I subtract 72 on both sides... I'll get 8s equals 72. And now I could divide by 8, and I get s equals 9. So it works out exactly. If it came out to 9.5 or something, I have to go back and say, okay, maybe I need to adjust my numbers of vans. But in this case, that works out. So I'd have 6 large vans, 9 small vans as another combination. Again, those aren't the only ones, but use the intercepts, because you've already done the work on those. And then you have to try some numbers out and see what you think works. Uh, and see if it does actually work out when you plug some numbers in and some other combinations. Right, so standard form, remember, is AX plus BY equals C. AX plus BY equals C. To get that, we can start with our slope, right point slope form, simplify to slope intercept form, and then get the X and Y on the same side of the equal sign. And keep in mind, equivalent equations do the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. We saw our horizontal and vertical lines, a lot of review of some other things we've seen previously. And then those application problems can be tricky, so keep practicing those so you understand how we can use a standard form in the situations like we just saw.